Primordial Radio. Scott Ian, the legendary Scott Ian of Anthrax, here having a chat. And we got so much to talk about, but we have to get the important stuff out of the way with first. It's well known that you were a huge fan of Game of Thrones to the extent that you were actually in it. What did you think to House of the Dragon? <laughs> um, well, uh, at the risk of destroying my street credibility, I have not yet watched it. What? I have had literally no time to uh, even start it. And I, I feel like it's something that it's it holds enough importance in my life where I, it can't just be a thing where I, I get to watch half an episode and then I may not get to finish it for a couple of days or so I need time to actually just be able to sit and watch it and uh, and enjoy it. And uh, I, I'm just too busy right now. There's Sadly for me, there's no TV in my life at this moment. <laughs> I am, man. I had you pegged that you'd be, I, I figured that you'd be there waiting on, uh, it's a Sunday night. I was, Sunday. I was, trust me, I was. I was so excited for the first episode and I don't remember I don't remember what happened and why Pearl and I didn't get to see it. And then like two weeks, three weeks, three episodes had gone by. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm just going to wait at this point for the season to be done. And and now it is. And uh, I'm going to um, South America with Mr. Bungle at the beginning of December for two weeks. So I'm fingers crossed. Uh, I'll have some downtime in my hotel rooms while I'm there to uh Instead of enjoying the sights and sounds of <laughs> of Chile and Argentina and Brazil, I'll be in a dark hotel room watching uh, House of the Dragon. <laughs> How or have you managed to avoid spoilers so far? Because I've been seeing it everywhere. When I was like going on TikTok or go on Facebook, I was just I don't go on. I don't go on, I don't go on social media really, other than. Uh, uh, Instagram and I don't follow anything on Instagram that would give me spoilers. So it's really easy for me to avoid. I don't, I don't go to, I do, I do go to some nerd sites pretty regular, um, a site called I O nine and a site called nerdist. And, uh, but they're very, very good about, uh, their articles where it says right at the beginning, if you don't want spoilers, don't read it. So I, I it's easy to stay away. Yeah, man. So, uh, all right, you haven't seen House of the Dragon. I hope you enjoy it, and I look forward to... I haven't seen the Lord of the Rings show either, which Ooh. I I saw the first episode. Uh, we were able to watch the first one, and I loved it. And same thing. I just, like, it's not just House of the Dragon. I've got about six things on my list that I need to watch, and uh, yeah, and all my friends are like, what the... Dude, like, when are we going to be able to talk about this? And I'm like, eventually, like, sorry, sorry, I'm I'm busy with my my band again. COVID, well, I won't say COVID ended because it still exists, well, but yeah. but things, you know, things business wise started to get back to normal. So suddenly, I'm in a touring band again, and uh, and we've picked up writing a record, and um, yeah, I seem to be busy with life again, and. Don't have as much time for television. <laughs> uh, funny. I, th there's a really cool TV show that uh, you probably haven't seen that you're going to need to catch up on and check out. It's called The Sopranos, right? It's <laughs> yeah. about these, these... Oh, you've heard of that one, right? <laughs> funny funny that you mentioned that because that's actually on our list of rewatches. It's like Sopranos and Mad Men are right at the top of two shows that we're thinking like, well, maybe we could just re-watch these in the meantime because we don't have time to really focus on something new. Yeah. There's no pressure to re-watch. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of drop in and drop out as as the, the time exactly. takes. Like if you miss half an episode because you're off doing the dishes or whatever, it doesn't right. matter. I've got yeah, Sopranos yeah. and uh, Sons of Anarchy. It's so mm -hmm. high up on my rewatch list. Right. Oh, okay. Just awesome. got to see that one again. So... We've gone from Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. I was watching earlier on uh, the phenomenal video from the Fender Custom Shop of you <laughs> and Tom Morello and Nuno Betancourt and Brad Paisley and Ramin De 
Diwali, I think his name is apologies. I didn't make a note of his name. The guy who wrote the Game of Thrones. Yeah, Ramin, yeah. Ramin Dwa, Dwawadi. Yeah, Dwa, yeah. Incredible, I think I said it right. incredible composer. And I was just looking, and you just have the biggest grin on your face, that entire thing, chugging out the rhythm for one of the most iconic TV shows of all time. Two questions. First, yes. how was that? Second question, did you get to keep the custom uh, direwolf Fender Telecaster you had? Uh, to answer the first question, it was awesome. Uh, it was a great experience. I love all those guys, all those as people and as players. I was super excited to get to be a part of it. Um, it was great that they want, I learned the harmony bits too, you know, but uh, I can't remember if it was Tom's idea uh or but uh yeah at some point the idea was floated what if you held down the rhythm i am the rhythm player uh and i was very excited about that that i got to basically because there's no bass guitar hmm. so i'm the whole bottom end in that in that thing and i'm just yeah i'm just chugging and down picking these you know this chunky riff so um yeah it, the whole thing was really exciting and then just let those guys go nuts um it, it was great. And I'll tell you what, I mean, look, Nuno technically is probably the the best guitar player in the room. But uh, man, when Brad Paisley walked in and, you know, he just literally comes in cold like he he hadn't been there jamming for an hour and a half with the rest of us. And the dude walks in, plugs in and just burns this solo. And we're all just like, God damn, that guy. That you can guy see it on your faces and every single one of you. I mean, to have like the likes of Nuno Betancourt and Tom Morello sat there going, yeah. damn. Yeah, and, you know, it's like it's not shocking. I mean, you know, I, uh, I, I've heard a little bit of his catalog and you could hear it. And but more in the context of a country style yeah. guitar player, the dude walks in and starts tearing shit up. And it's like that guy could sit. He could literally play with any metal band tomorrow, like <laughs> if he wanted to. But he'd make way less money. <laughs> yeah, likely. Yeah, man. All right. So we're talking. Hey, wait, wait. And then part two of your question oh, was, yeah. no, we did not, which still to this day, I think Nuno is still angry. If you ever get to interview him, well, unless you want him to get pissed off and maybe have a, <laughs> a dark turn in your interview. He couldn't believe after the fact, like I, I just assumed, yeah, we might get to keep these guitars. You know, it's like we're doing this thing and, and Fender's going to get millions and millions and millions of views. And they're going to probably sell a shit ton of these uh, very expensive guitars. Million, 37 million views. Yeah. And, and those guitars were like, depending on which one, like I think the Lannister one was like 25 or 35 grand. Um, I was playing the Stark Telecaster, and man, that thing felt insane. I mean, it was so good. Uh, it felt great. It sounded great. And uh, I think those are like 15 or 20. I mean, these are really expensive guitars. And uh, and I assumed at least maybe they would, I don't know, say, well, you could have them for cost. or. But no, nothing. Nothing was nothing. And I just figured, all right, whatever. Nuno being the, the hardcore Boston dude that he is, he was pissed. Like he sent an email after the fact he sent like me and Tom, I think it might've just been me and Tom, like what the fuck, man, you know, they're getting millions of views. I heard they sold out. They're making millions of dollars on these guitars. And why? Because we fucking played them in that video and they don't even give us one. He goes, he, he was fucking pissed. And I was like, you know, he's got a point there. And uh, I think I actually I'm friends with Dan Weiss, the, you know, who's one of the writers and co-creators of the show. Uh, he also played that day. He's in he's there playing. And uh, I was like, yeah, Daniel, it's kind of funny that that Fender didn't like give us guitars based on the fact that they've made millions of dollars off of our video. And uh, he's like, well, I actually bought those guitars that we used that day. And I'm like, they made you pay for them. He goes, yeah, I, I bought them. He goes, so if you ever need to borrow it, it's here for you to use anytime. Whoa. I was like, that's very nice, but still, 
I, I feel like they should have given us. And look, <laughs> I, I'm I'm part of the Fender world. So is Tom. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if Nuno is, but because uh, um, I play Jackson and I play EVH and they're both under the Fender umbrella. And I, I have nothing but a great relationship with that company and the people there. But they could have kicked us down. A, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of those games. Oh. Even if it was like a cheaper model or something. It's like, come on, guys! You just literally made millions of dollars because of the video we made. But <laughs> oh man, it, that's TV why it's called the music business. Indeed, <laughs> TV is a sore point just at the moment. I had my first kids, uh, my first and so far likely to be only kid earlier on this year. And as is always the way, babies are a bit more expensive than you thought. So literally yesterday, I had to sell my EVH oh. Frankie Relic. Uh, not, uh, one the, not one of the custom shop jobs, but one of the, you know, like the one that like 12, 1300 bucks, something like that. Yeah, 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 sure. I sure. love that guitar so much. So I have my uh, my X-Wing tattoo. And I've got a friend of mine to paint. Oh, that's me. great. Van that's Halen great. X-Wing. Because of course, well, the, the, good, the good, I guess the good thing about that is besides the fact that you have a child. Uh, yes. Is that <laughs> those are those, those guitars are production models and they are that price and they're not going to go up really in price and they're always there and they're always going to be good. So, you know, you could always get another one at some point. I'm definitely getting another one at some point. But one of the reasons that we are talking today is if you go to Hoff Competitions, H-O-F competitions.com, we have got a competition live right now to win a fabulous prize, a one-to-one -one video conversation with my guest right now, you get half an hour to chat with Scott Ian about whatever that yeah, we can want. We can talk about Game of Thrones, except for House <laughs> of the Dragon. No, no spoilers. Yeah, you've got to watch it by then in case somebody wants to ask about it. But not only that, you can win a fabulous Scott Ian signature King V from Jackson. All right, Scott, please yes. give me a bit, talk nerdy to me. Uh, tell me about your signature Jackson. Is that... That should be my version of that poison song. Talk nerdy to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, I it's a it's a guitar that I played on stage at Brixton Academy on the tour that we just did uh, in the UK uh, at that sold out Brixton show. Uh, I'm pretty sure I played. Well, I can now. I, well, I could I could figure it out if I pull the video up. But it was either Metal Thrashing Mad or Only. I'm pretty sure. It was one of those two songs. Uh, I played that guitar, and uh, yeah, I gave it a, I gave it quite the workout. It wasn't just that show too. I, I had the guitar with me on the tour, so the guitar was used every day. I was warming up on that guitar, and um, obviously, it, it, any guitar that I play on stage that someone's going to be able to get their hands on, I, I, of course, I want it to be something that uh, obviously I've approved. And the fact that it, it was able to get on stage with me and play in front of paying customers coming to see an Anthrax show, that just shows you the quality and the level of the guitar. Even though it is, it's, you know, this is my mid-price model. But I think the thing that people uh, maybe sometimes confuse is that um, uh, maybe they think I wouldn't play these guitars live because, oh, well, it's not a custom shop or it's just for that. These things sound great. And they're absolutely up to the task of being able to, you know, handle what I do on stage. And they sound great. They play great. They feel great. Um, it's a completely professional instrument. And uh, yeah, and I played it. And I guess you get pictures of me playing it and video of me playing it. And we get to hang out and and talk. And uh, yeah, and there there might may even be other goodies involved. But uh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a it's a pretty awesome uh, awesome competition, and uh, and why not why not treat yourself? Mm -hmm. you just... <laughs> All right. Well, you talking about the one to one video chat? I mean, you know, obviously, you and me, we're having a chat right now. What would you what? Let's just say we we have somebody wins the competition, right? They've got this incredible guitar from you, and then they've got a half hour video chat with you. You could give them a guitar lesson on the guitar that you played, but say that. You you have anything, right? What would you want someone to ask you about? What is the thing where you can get your get your pens in your top pocket 
Yeah, thumbs in your braces and go, ah, I'm glad you asked. Uh, if they want to talk about like Marvel comics from the 1960s and 1970s, the Marvel Silver Age, that's I could uh, I could go on endlessly about that world. Um, uh, but probably most people aren't going to want to talk about that. The the, the <laughs> intricacies of the Fantastic Four and Daredevil and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, what you mentioned earlier before that. Um, about uh, a guitar lesson, yeah. Whether you're a, just an absolute beginner and your plan is to just hang this thing on the wall because it looks awesome, uh, which many people do, uh, or you know, you're someone that uh, actually already plays and you've always wanted to maybe know how I play a certain riff the exact way I play it. That could absolutely be done uh, over Zoom. I've I've given quite a few lessons over Zoom, and uh, yeah, anything from something semi easy like madhouse um or medusa um to you know more difficult stuff like caught in a mosh or fight them till you can't or whatever any any anthrax song you would you would want to learn I, I could certainly help you along your way fantastic man that's so cool it is so cool and if you want to enter the competition all you got to do head to hoffcompetitions.com uh, you'll see the competition listed on there. You've got to answer the, frankly, ridiculously easy question that's on there. <laughs> then you get your tickets for entry, and we will be drawing that competition on December the 1st. The competition itself closes on November the 28th. May the odds be ever in your favor. Yes, I mean, you know, just like I said, the holidays are coming, man. What's a what's a couple of what's a couple of pounds to, you know, for the possibility of winning? something awesome like this and you know being able to show it off to your friends <laughs> absolutely man it's so cool so this is this is a part right i know that you are big on kind of uh hanging out with fans and you're a very approachable dude but has it always been this way because i know like back in in the 80s when anthrax first got going you know there were always like radio station competitions and that kind of thing is what ha what happens nowadays like, you know, in, in the digital age, is it just a continuation of that or is it something else entirely? I don't I don't think anyone in the 80s, except maybe David Bowie, who didn't didn't he have some weird things like where he was already talking about the Internet way before there was an Internet and all that kind of stuff. But uh, other than him, you know, I don't think anybody would have guessed where things, you know, that this exists and um you know, this is literally in the 80s. This was science fiction. It the was idea, a room of you know, kit, wasn't it? Cameras and lights and recording equipment. It was a yeah, room but even so, the idea, the idea that I could be anywhere on the planet and FaceTime call with my family. I mean, you know, I think back to the days in the 80s when we'd we'd go on tour outside the United States and the just the amount of time you spent trying to figure out how you would even call home without it costing you all the money you were going to make on the tour, like just to stay in touch with somebody, um, you know, and, and then now we have this, it's like, you know, no, it was science fiction. So yeah, social media and the internet and, uh, you know, I, I, I can just, I, I can compare it to just how, I see my friends on, let's say, Instagram, friends of mine that I follow or guys in bands that I know that I follow their bands or whatever. And and then I'll like bump into somebody like that I know from a band that I haven't seen in person in five years, but I feel like I know what they're doing every day. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I see them on Instagram. So, um, yeah, the access is the access is is crazy. Um, and, you know, of course, it's all up to you as an individual on how much you want to um, allow. You could very easily just get off social media and not have any access. And plenty of people do that as well. But I, I actually enjoy it. Um, uh, it's pretty much a one way street. You know, I'm posting and I'm putting it out there for the world. I don't really interact all that much. Um, sometimes people will ask specific gear questions. Uh, like I'll find myself answering those. Like if people are asking in comments of things I post about gear, things like that, I'll usually answer. Um, 
but uh uh yeah um i i like it i i don't mind it at all uh I certainly don't get in arguments with people on social media. Let's put it that way. I don't I don't bother with comments in general other than the the random gear question. I don't care what people think. If I cared what people thought, we never we never would have made it past 1982. So, uh um uh yeah, um I think the access is for a band like us, it's a really good thing. Uh, I think we've been able to use social media in a really positive way to kind of elevate the brand of our band and 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 have people join with us you know uh, uh on social media and I, I i think it's been a great tool so you mentioned that catching up with you know rock star friends you know whether you've got conflicting schedules you don't see somebody for ages you've just announced a tour for uh, the states for next year heading out on the road with exodus and black label I right. know he doesn't drink anymore, but on the odd occasion when I've met when I've met and hung out with Zach, Christ, has he was he this mad when he was on the booze? Oh, he's always been Zach, with or without booze. It's um, you know, maybe it was just a little bit more amplified, um, <laughs> you know, when he was on on the booze. But we just did a whole run in the states in august and september it was anthrax black label and hate breed uh, so we and it did so well we get to do a, a whole nother trip you know and yeah. lots of cities we didn't play yet and um which is very exciting because we love the black label guys and obviously we love exodus we've known those guys for 39 years that, that's not a made-up number 39 years um and uh but yeah uh, zach is um zach's amazing and uh a true force of nature. Uh, I mean, the guy's just, he's incredible. And uh, its there's never a dull moment. I, I love being backstage with that guy because you could be sitting around bored or whatever in like some crappy backstage and there's nothing to do. And uh, Zach comes walking in and uh, they, there's always something interesting to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I know great. that you guys, uh, I know that you still refer to uh, the late, great St. Dimebag as the sixth member of Anthrax. How do you feel about Zach paying homage to him with the Pantera reunion? Oh, man. You know, look, th the two of those dudes were, you know, they were thick as thieves, those two guys. They were so close. Uh, you know, there was definitely a bond, you know, uh, I won't go as far to say, you know, look, obviously Daryl and, and Vinny were brothers. Zach was a, probably as close as you could get to actually having a blood relation to, to Daryl. I mean, those two dudes w were as thick, like I said, thick as thieves, man. And, um, and, uh, yeah, as, as long as I knew Daryl, uh, and I, I, I hate to ever say, well, you know, I knew the guy and this is what he would want. And, you know, I, it's not, but, you know, I, I, I feel a little uncomfortable ever, ever doing anything like that. But in this situation, I, I, I feel like I would make an, an exception because I would truly think Daryl, based on my many, 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 many conversations over the years with him, um, would have definitely said, oh, if I ain't here, you got to get, get Zach up there to fly the flag. And I mean, it just sounds like something Daryl would have said. So, um, yeah, I, I think Zach is, is he's the guy. He's the, he is the guy to if get up. If anyone was ever going to do it, it had to be Zach, didn't it? You know, and, and I, I think the other thing, not to get too much into the weeds uh, on this, because I know there's, you know, there's a lot of people out there with a lot of opinions that that's how it is because of the internet. Everybody gets to put their opinion out there. You know, uh, uh, there's no editors anymore. It's just opinions. Uh, and, uh, um, but so if you want my opinion, it's that, you know, this is a tribute and that's, that's, that's what it is meant to be. This is a tribute to one of the best bands in the history of heavy metal uh, it's a tribute that also happens to have two of the band members in it, uh, along with two guys who I don't think there's anyone better to be able to pay tribute to Pantera than Zach and Charlie. And uh, um, and I hope Zach just gets up there and does Zach. 
You know, I, I don't look at it as a cover band thing. You know, the reason you want Zach there is because, well, first of all, he's technic his technical ability is is on the level where he could actually play Daryl's solos. You know, that you have to be of a certain level guitar player to even be able to do that. Of course, Zach is can do that. So yeah, he he's got that ability, but you know, you also want it to be Zach. You want it to be Zach, you know, not just him trying to cover Daryl. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I feel about it anyway. I, 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 the reason Zach is there is because he's Zach, because of his personality, because of his playing. They could have just found a guy in a Pantera cover band <laughs> who could probably, you know, play it note for note. And if you close your eyes, you know, on all that. But I just hope Zach gets up there and, you know, and pays his tribute to his, his brother and, and to Pantera. There's a lovely news story doing the rounds this week where uh, Zach, I think Zach was, he was talking to Ola England on the, on his YouTube channel and uh, saying that uh, to try and some of the, the technical stuff that Dimes did, he'd been watching YouTube tutorials just like the rest of us would. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I it's saw great, that. It's great to know that no matter how good you could be Zach <laughs> wild. And yeah. if you want to learn something, you still, I'm just going to see what somebody on YouTube's done, see how I can figure out how the hell that works. Yeah, yeah, well, why not? I mean, it's a lot easier than sitting there, re you know, going back and trying to listen to something 4,000 times to get it right. Someone's already done the work for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh, damn, I'm, I, I'm, just, I'm just going to see what somebody else did. Well, Scott, when, we were, uh, when we were out on the tour uh, back in August and September with them, you know, like we would be in the same hotels a lot on a day off and I would see Zach in the lobby or something and be like, we're going to get something to eat. You want to go get something to eat? He's like, no, I, I got to go back to my room. I'm in Pantera University tonight. So he, he'd he be he'd be doing his homework. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's, you need, that's where you need to be. Yeah, I, I hear you. No worries. <laughs> Man. Well, I'm, I've got to say, I am so looking forward to seeing you. I think the next time we're seeing you in the UK – is going to be uh, on the Saturday of Bloodstock Festival 2023, main stage mm -hmm. special guest, Anthrax. Yes. That's going to be something else. But for now, Scott Ian, thank you so much for having a chat. This has been wonderful. And if you want to check out that competition to win one of Scott's very, very cool Jackson Signature King V guitars, along with a Zoom chat, a one-to-one -one like this. Yes. 30 minutes then head to Hoff Competitions, hofcompetitions.com. Yes, get over there. H, I love H. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Scott, thank you very much, mate. I really, really appreciate it. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. Take it easy, and I'll see you next August. Right on, man. Primordial Radio.